I am here with Tim Huang, creator and founder of Ruffle Khan. <laughs> Hi Tim. Hi, how you doing? I'm good. Why do you think that some memes cross over to the mainstream, whereas others aren't as successful? Well, some of them are just gross, right? Which actually prevents them from passing uh, into anywhere mainstream than a like, very specific subset of the internet population. So, you know, for example, Goatsy will never cross into the mainstream for obvious reasons. But Lil Cats did, right? Because, right. you know, even parents can get behind cute cat pictures, you know, who can't? But I mean, what's interesting is I think we're going to see more of that threshold for crossing into the mainstream is going to get lower and lower, um, just because there's an, this increasing sort of infrastructure around um, allowing memes to scale up. You know, Ben Huff from Icon S. Cheeseburger likes calling it, uh, you know, the meme industry. Yeah. He's like, oh, RaffleCon's the industry conference. It um, is. And it's kind of weird in that respect because there is sort of that feel, right, that there's like people who are starting to actually play a sort of meta role in helping these things either scale up and get to various places. People have a problem with the mainstreaming of internet culture. Um, and the question we want to ask is, do you feel the problem is more like a big part Party or an indie rock band in that is the problem because more people are into it or the wrong kinds of people are into it? You know, the, the close analogy that I can see uh, in, in reaction to the, the friction of mainstreaming internet memes is that, you know, I like this band before you did, therefore you f***ing suck, right? That's kind of the attitude, right? What we're witnessing here, like looking around you guys, like there's a thousand people at this conference discussing what internet meme and internet culture is. As the internet has broader influence in our lives, it is inevitable that internet culture will spread to larger and more diverse group of people, whether you like it or not. I mean, memes are, you know, shareable kind of bits of information and, and part of that is, you know, to allow them to spread. They, there doesn't, you know, if there's a backstory, if there's, if you need to contextualize it to understand it, then it's not, it's not gonna go viral. All this stuff that we usually consider media, uh, video, image, uh, images, you know, image macros, whatever, whatever they are, it's becoming the language by which we kind of communicate with one another. This is media. This is how media works. It's more media. It's, you know, if you, if you haven't seen a TV show, you're out of the loop. The fashion industry is really interesting because there are no trademarks and no copyright on clothes designs. It forces innovation. Anybody can rip off somebody else's design. The commercialization of these things is driving innovation forward. I'm here with Jonah Peretti, who is the founder of BuzzFeed and a co-founder of the Huffington Post. Why do you think that some memes have more potential to cross over into the mainstream than others? I think the point of a lot of memes is to not cross over into the mainstream, especially when you see examples of memes where they're mashing up like three or four obscure memes into one thing, and if you like are really into this stuff, you look at it and you're like, oh, that's from here, and that's from there, and you're like, ah, that is never gonna go mainstream, because it makes no freaking sense to anyone except people who spend, you know, half their day on 4chan. Right. You know, so, so I think, um, in a way, there are kind of different types of culture. There's like making culture that is niche culture and making something that is silly and pop and accessible that um, yeah. that that can reach a much like larger audience. Cat. Yeah. 4chan. I run the site that produces memes. You all study it. Greg kind of collates it, and then I mean, essentially, you profit from it. So. <laughs> I, I like you. I don't like the model. Do you feel that you put something back? I, I don't. But I mean, do, do you think that you are contributing enough to kind of warrant what you essentially extract, in, you know, from eyeballs and ad dollars? The the main reason, the main thing I think we're contributing back is the advancement of idea of internet culture to more and more people. I think just the sheer growing acceptance of user submitted content and the fact that we can affect popular culture, um, I think is the most important thing that we do. There's there's so much that's like created created anonymously and like I'm gonna contribute to this Wikipedia and the Cyclopedia Dramatica. And it's like you're just giving it away for free because you love it and because we all love it and we want to like we want to share it. It's funny because we're characterizing it as the mainstreamification of internet culture. But I like to think of it as more of that internet culture is now winning. You know, we, we have arrived. The internet is here. You guys laugh about this, but we may be, you know, on the forefront of internet culture becoming the most dominant culture in the world, right? Through the power of the internet and through the community.